Mama said the corn. Child of the corn. Knee high by the 4th of July. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's June 17th. Yep. Yeah, it looks good. Some of this is tasseling out. Yeah. Oh, let's start the tassel look out here. Ah, oh, look at that. More pollen to make me cough. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, corn looks pretty good. It does. I'm just starting to pick some strawberries now. They're not coming in abundance yet, but there's a few. A lot on the vine, though. There is. There's a lot on the vine. Oh, look at that. Oh. Okay. A little white one. Leave it yeah. or pick it? Why don't you pick Give it? it? Okay. Because something will get it. Oh, that one looks good. Oh, yeah. There's a prize. You know what? I'll have that with some ice cream tonight. <laughs> I'll give a few more days. Those are three there? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Some nice one here. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of berries in here. There is. Wow. They all come in at once, so I'll have to make some jam. Oh. <laughs> I'd hate to have to do that. I know. I'm not a big jam person. Yeah, I like the, a little bit. The low sugar jam. Yeah. Or even just freeze them is fine. Right. Wow. Wow. Look at all the berries in here. Wow. I'd say in about four days, we're yeah. going to be picking and grinning. <laughs> I'm grinning now. <laughs> yeah, those are nice berries. Mm -hmm. I like that one. I'll take that one too. Before something gets it. Oh, I still got this one. Ah. Uh, Chickamonka. Wow, there's a lot of them in there turning red. Yeah. Got to get them before the chipmunks yeah, and the we'll birds get, get them. Yeah, we'll get here with the yep. and do some picking. Yeah, yummy. Okay. When I first built the greenhouse, I set up a rain catchment system, and we kept that until winter came, and then took it down. Ah. Uh, over the last few years, you've heard me talk about um, the rain, the toxic rain that we have now. I've talked about the foam that I see everywhere. Uh, I voiced my displeasure with what's going on in the environment. All my life, now I've been gardening all my life, and if you have a stretch where you don't have any rain and the plants get droopy, then you get rain, and my rain for a couple of days or rain through the night. When the sun comes out, those plants just flourish. They always have. Just reach for the sky. They look beautiful. Not anymore. Over the last few years, I've talked about how I'm seeing the plants having the opposite reaction to the rain and the sun than they have all my life. Okay? So, there's got to be something in the rain. All right, now that's not just acid rain. We've had acid rain for a long time. I'm not going to get into talking about geoengineering and all the crap they spray because that's too controversial. All I'm doing is what I always do with you folks is share my observations, okay? Last year, our cucumber plants looked wonderful. We had rain. I come out in the morning, the rain had stopped. They looked beautiful. Sun was coming out. I went and did a bunch of stuff, and by noontime, they were so wilted, they never bounced back. So this year, I'm doing a little experiment, and I am planting some things in the greenhouse, and I'm not letting these plants get rained on, and I'm feeding them well water. And I want to show you the comparison, because there's no comparison to what's going on inside as there is going on outside. Now the stuff in here is just doing amazing. Just amazing. Look at this trellis of cucumbers. And we're going to pick our first cucumber tonight. And this thing has been loaded with flowers. Look at the flowers in this here. There's just so many of them. 
Look at this. Little baby <laughs> there's cucumbers. There's a lot of those right There's a there. lot of young cucumbers on it. It's just amazing. Now a lot of these flowers have gone by, but it's just amazing. Oh, look at this Swiss chard. Look at the size of those leaves. I think we got some Swiss chard rolls coming up. Wow, this yeah. is like a giant. Like tomorrow, do some giant Swiss oh. chard rolls. <laughs> I'd say so, yeah. And look wow. at this one. Look at this. Yeah. Look at the size of that. Look at that. Yeah. Look at these are so good. Wow. We do stuffed Swiss chard rolls with that. Yeah, we do a pork and rice mixture. Yep. Make a creamy sauce and bake them. They're so good. Didn't we do a video on that? We did. The only difference with the plants in here, as opposed to the plants outside, is these are grown indoors so they don't get rained on, and they're fed well water. Well, the well water that we have is basically just groundwater, so you do have rainwater, but it is somewhat filtered from the ground, and there's spring water mixed in with it. But these plants aren't getting fed direct rainwater, and they're not being rained on. And as you can see, all the leaves in here are healthy green. They're just beautiful looking. Now, you might think that all of these are doing so good because they're in the greenhouse and they got an early start. That's wrong. I had the best plants, that, I took the best plants that I had and I put them in the garden first and that was around the 20th of May. And they have barely grown outside and the leaves look horrible. And it was very mild here. It yeah. was. Milder we, we, than usual. We checked the 10 day forecast the last 10 days and there was no of May and there was no threats of frost or anything so we put it out. It was a really good gardening it was like conditions. like the nighttime lows were 50 and it was like 80 yeah. and even close to 90 in the daytime. That's right. So everything went in the garden first and then the surplus, like this here, this is a butternut surplus that is, just hasn't gotten planted yet. But when they got planted, they were about this size and real healthy looking like these. This looks like this because I just brought it in. It's been outside. It's been forgotten about. Plus, it's no doubt root bound in there, of too. Of course, yeah. But I'm going to take you out into the garden, and I'm going to show you the difference between the plants out there and the plants in here. And those got planted first. This was the remaining surplus that I put in here. And look where it's at. There's no comparison. Like these zucchinis. All right, look at the size of these leaves. They are flawless, they're just beautiful. That's a little bird turd because a bird came in the greenhouse. They are just beautiful. Now again, these zucchini plants were the best stock that I had and planted out here first. The butternut that I showed you inside, look, these have not grown. They've been in the ground since around the 20th of May. They've been in the ground about a month. They really haven't grown. Another zucchini, it looks horrible. The bush beans look good. But the pole beans, not so much. The tomatoes, on the other hand, look awesome. The tomato plants are just full of flowers. They look incredible. Yeah, these are big and really lush. They are. We've even got some little tomatoes on a few places. There are, a few. It's yeah. early. I mean, we're, this is mid-June. Yeah. We don't usually harvest tomatoes in this part of the country until your first ones might be late August. Yeah, well, I can see a tomato from here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Hey, tomato already. But these, the tomato plants, mm. look wonderful. Yeah, look at that right here. Oh, yeah, look at a couple mm. of them. Mm. Awesome. This was a spaghetti squash that was beautiful. I put it out here, look at it. Look. This is a Swiss chart I have growing out here. It's a joke. All the squash that are outside look horrible. I want to show you, look at these. These are butternuts 
They haven't grown at all. They've been in the ground about a month. They really haven't grown. The color's not good. They're spindly. They, they don't look good. Now these, um, these zucchinis are starting to look good. They're starting to get some good color to them. This one's getting a little size to it. But still, no comparison to the plant that's inside. So now I'm going to set up another planter. I took that center planter out because I wasn't going to grow in the greenhouse this summer. Now I'm going to put one back in and I'm going to take a couple of my little surplus that look really bad because they've just been neglected. Put them in there and see what happens and I will um, document the progress with it. Cut oh the first cook, the first cucumber. You want it? Yeah. Look at this thing. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. That's a dandy. It is. Number 22. Yep, cuke straight eights. So, other than strawberries, this is the first pickin'. Number 22, the straight eights from the first trellis. One cucumber. That's the beginning of it. That cucumber vine is about eight foot tall. <laughs> now, as you know, I'm always experimenting. What's going on in the greenhouse this year is an experiment. I'm trying to grow cucumbers and zucchini. I've never grown them indoors, so this is an experiment. Out here in the garden, I have all these beds, lots of beds. Some beds have cow manure. Some beds have chicken manure. Some beds have a mixture. Some beds have no manure. It's just compost that have decomposed from last year. Some are have leaf mulch, some have hay mulch, some have no mulch. So I'm experimenting and it doesn't matter what the squash are, if they're outside they're doing horrible. I don't know about that. Once again I will tell you this was the best stock that I had and I planted it in here first. These may have grown a foot in length since I planted them, but look at the leaves. They were dark green and flawless when I put them out here, and every time it rains, they look worse. Look at these. That's what the rain is doing to them. It's the only difference between these and the ones inside is the ones inside are not getting rained on. Same with this bed over here. They don't look good, do they? And this bed is different than that bed. That bed has chicken poop. This one does not. Okay. Looking horrible. You've always heard me rave about the zinnias that we plant and they just look sick sick little zucchini plant eh? freaking joke it's been out here a month so what's going on in the garden this year and last year is pretty strange I've seen some pretty strange happenings very disturbing things for one thing there's no bees our first garden here on the mountain remember i showed you we plant a lot of flowers and sunflowers throughout the garden we like to attract the bees and hummingbirds and the uh, butterflies to the garden. And it was just absolutely gorgeous out here. We had lots and lots of butterflies. And if you looked at a sunflower, it was covered with bees. And our garden was super abundant that year. Then last year, I was seeing what I mentioned about the rain. The, the plants would, would we'd go maybe a week or whatever without any rain, and, and then they get rained on. And then when the storm goes away and the sun comes out in full force, we were losing plants. Things were dying. And if they stayed alive, they, they looked horrible. They got all yellow and crappy like the cucumbers look outside. Even the kale over there looks all limp. Our tomatoes looked wonderful last year, 
And then we had a few days of rain, and then they all turned yellow, and they looked absolutely horrible, and I got so disgusted with my garden. I wasn't planning on gardening this year, but I couldn't help it. You know how I love my greenhouse. So I started a bunch of stuff. Everything was looking great because I baby it in here. And like I told you, I took all of my best plants and planted them in the garden. I wasn't going to grow anything in the greenhouse this summer. Remember, I had a bed right here in the middle. I took that out. I wasn't. I was going to use this to store stuff. But then I had surplus. I, I grew too many things in here, too many seedlings. And like I said, all the good stuff went out there and I had some surplus. And I go, oh, screw it. I'll put them in here. I know the Swiss chard likes it in here. I've never tried to grow cucumbers indoors. And I never tried to grow zucchini indoors. So the plants that I put in here were the smaller ones. All the good stuff went in the garden. So to look in here and see these looking so good, like I said, your first thought's going to be, well, they got an early start, but they didn't. Everything went in the garden first. This was just planted afterwards. It was like an afterthought. And the only difference between in here and outside is these plants are not getting rained on. They're fed well water, and the rain doesn't touch the leaves. And they're beautiful. They're flawless. And my cucumbers outside look absolutely horrible. My squash looks absolutely horrible. I've got a few things looking good and a lot of things looking really bad. And when I walk through the forest, I find the same thing. The beech trees look beautiful. Basswood trees look really good. The oak trees look really good. The pines, the balsams, the spruce are dying off. And if this keeps up, I mean, the pine, the spruce, and the balsam are building material. That's framing lumber. That's the framing lumber for the next generation. And if things keep up the way they are, I fear for the next generation, the younger generation. I really do. But I'm going to talk about that in another video. I've had a lot of people asking me for an update on my observations of the forest. You've heard me talk about how disheartening it is for me to see what I see out here. And as I mentioned before, what I see is going to be different than what the normal person sees. It's like if I came to your neighborhood and walked around your neighborhood, I would never know of any recent changes. Maybe somebody painted their house, maybe somebody built a new house, maybe somebody tore down a house because I'm unfamiliar with your neighborhood. Well, my neighborhood is the forest, and I'm familiar with it, because I'm out here every day. And when I start seeing changes in the trees, like the central leaders are dying on the spruce. I noticed it first with these spruce, because Lori and I planted these early in our relationship. That was like 17 or 18 years ago. And I've been documenting the growth of these. They've been doing really good. And now this past year, the central leaders of these trees, except for one, has died. Normally the top of the tree looks just like this, full of new growth. But I noticed it because the central leader of the top is dead. See? It's dead. There's no growth. So then I went to look at the other ones that we planted. This one... It looks okay. You see? It's getting some new growth right there. And it's green. Okay? So then this one here, I come to check it out. In the very top, the central leader of this one is dead too. You know, like right here. Here's another little spruce. It's growing. But the central leader is dead. Okay? Now, if you took a healthy tree and you broke off the central leader, it would grow a new one. But when it dies like that, it's not going to grow any taller. The top of a spruce tree is supposed to look like that, like a bottle brush. Okay? It doesn't take me long to find them with dead central leaders. 
I walked about 20 feet. Here's a tree here. Here we go. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see that more and more. Unfortunately, so it's raining today. We'll see how the plants react when the sun comes out. I don't really know why. Some plants are still looking really good and others aren't. I know last year the tomatoes went downhill real fast. They were looking beautiful and then they all went to crap like a lot of this garden looks. Stuff in the greenhouse stayed looking healthy. So because it's raining, I decided, and there's rain coming, I decided that I'd pull up the flight tracker app on my phone and right away, just like I figured, because I always see them right ahead of the front, there's a tanker plane heading for the Adirondacks. And they'll either go to the Adirondacks over the old forge area and circle for hours and then go back to where they took off from or they'll come here and fly in circles for hours or they'll hit this place and then they'll do the Adirondacks and then they'll go back to where they came from. So right away there's a tanker plane. So I follow it and I check it a couple minutes later and it's just starting to circle and this is the footage that I got off of the flight radar app today um, and it's just like clockwork right ahead of the front there they go. It's 10.52 in the morning on June 22nd. I just turned on my phone and right away I found a tanker plane. He's going back up over Old Forge like they always do. And he's just starting to circle. This is live on my phone right now. Okay, so I'm going to track that plane. And I bet you anything he will circle around here for a long time, about maybe five hours and then head back to where he came from or he'll circle in this area for quite a while and then come over us and circle for quite a while and then go back to where he came from so we'll see what he's doing now here it is at 11:42 a.m. and he's doing his thing like they always do all right I'm gonna keep checking it so here he is at 12:44, all done circle jerking Heading back to where he came from, as you can see, the color of the line is starting to change. Whoop. As you can see, he's descending. He's going to land where he started from. Mission accomplished, I guess. Whatever that was. Now, I'm not going to tell you what they're doing. You do your own math. But I just share my observations, like I said. So, what I see is the trees get sick from what's going on in the environment. And then once a tree is um, in decline, bugs move in. And then the woodpeckers move in to, you know, start hammering on the tree, tearing the tree apart, trying to get to the bugs. And I said this in a recent Patreon video. But then people who don't know what the hell they're talking about blame the trees dying off on insects and bugs. But people have been asking me for an update on the trees. I'm not going to talk too much about that in this video. I have got so many disheartening updates about the trees and what I'm seeing in the environment. And what I learned that the scientists are doing at Harvard University in their playing God tactics to cool the planet. Now, I don't listen to the news. I don't go to Facebook news. I don't go to Facebook at all. Uh... I don't thrive on conspiracy theories. When I was trying to learn more about the tactics used for climate control, like what B Bill Gates is up to, I go to the source. So if you don't have faith in what Harvard University puts on their own website, then why do people spend so much money to be a student there, right? So I go to Harvard University's website, and I see... The scientists are saying how they spray calcium carbonate in the atmosphere and this tactic to kind of dim the sun and cool the planet. Well, I'm no scientist, folks, but calcium carbonate is an antacid powder. It's like what is in Tums and other antacids. And if that's going to be sprayed in the sky, which it is, and then it's coming down in the rain, which it does, 
don't you think that an antacid powder would alter the pH of the soil in the water? Is that why some plants are doing good and other plants are dying off? And the same with the forest? I don't know. All I go by is my own observations. And what I observe is very, very disturbing. Well, I am just glad that I am on my way off this planet and I'm not some young dude who has a passion for living in the woods and living the homesteading lifestyle and wants to grow a garden and be self-sufficient and stuff like that. Because from what I'm seeing from my observations here in my neighborhood, it isn't pretty, folks. But anyway, luckily, things are looking pretty good. Doesn't look like we're going to have much squash this year unless things turn around. But when we move to our new place, my next greenhouse might be 100 feet long because I'm growing indoors. Who the fuck? It's a crazy freaking world we live in. <laughs>